So guys, in this next story, a woman who had pictures on her wall of serial killers, including Ted Bundy and Jeffrey Dahmer, smiled as she was convicted of murdering a boyfriend in a crazy knife attack. Manipulative and the jealous Shay Groves, who's 27, is facing life in jail for stabbing Frankie Fitzgerald 22 times while he slept after seeing he had messaged a girl. The five-week trial heard that the pair shared a mutual interest in BDSM and a camera was set up in the killer's bedroom at a home in Hampshire to record them whenever they're banging. On her walls, Groves had framed pictures of serial killers including Peter Sutcliffe, Myra Hindley and Rose West. She also had books about Charles Bronson and she was a big fan of true crime documentaries. Jurors were told the 27-year-old who rang a friend giggling after killing Mr Fitzgerald, showing his body saying, I've done him, had previously threatened to make his life a misery by leaking videos of him abusing which were later proven to be bogus. Groves then tried to cover her tracks with a false alibi by calling her friend. At Winchester Crown Court today, a jury found Groves guilty of murder after deliberating for nearly 18 hours. Guys, I'm going to tell you something in a moment about this BDSM stuff, but, but I'll just go through the story a little bit more. So, addressing the jury, the Honourable Mr Justice Tim Kerr said, It just remains for me to thank you for the dedication and work you have done on this case. He was addressing the jury. He said, This has been a long, hard and difficult case in which you have heard, at times, distressing evidence. I propose to exclude you from the jury service for a period of eight years from today. I personally, as a judge and institution, am deeply grateful to you. My heart felt and profound thanks. Jurors were also given an option to be excluded from jury service for the next eight years. So she's going to be sentenced next week. During the trial, the jurors heard that Groves bought a Celtic dagger used to stab Mr Fitzgerald for her rituals and that it strengthened spiritual connections. As well as posters of serial killers on a wall, she also had pictures of like Chucky, Jigsaw, Pennywise from It. So opening the case, the prosecutor, Stephen Perry and KC said of Groves, their sex life involved BDSM. He said it is likely she was obsessed with Frankie Fitzgerald because of his performance in the bedroom. The prosecution's case is the defendant is a manipulative, possessive and jealous woman. And the killing is very likely to have been a crime of passion driven by her jealousy. So guys, let me tell you something. So a few years back, I was working up north, checking the gas meters and stuff and went to go into a property and up north the gas meters are situated in the cellars it's property and the person of the property the woman looked absolutely normal that's where the gas meter is she goes it's in the cellar so gone down into the cellar turned the light on there was chains on the wall there was handcuffs coming off this apparatus thing like two handcuffs at the top two handcuffs at the bottom there was like loads of whips and Look like these black metal sticks. Guys, I'm telling you, I glanced over my shoulder just to make sure that that trap door to the cellar was still open. Anyway, I've checked the meter and that. Then I've gone upstairs and literally looked at the woman dead in the eye. It was like she didn't give anything away. Like what I'd seen down there, she just didn't let on that I saw anything there. She did offer me a cup of tea, but I thought, sack that, I'm getting out of there. We're back to the story. So Groves video called her friend, giggling. And admitting the killing. Telling jurors about the call, Mr. Perry and Casey continued the defendant went to the bedroom three times and showed the body of Frankie Fitzgerald covered in a duvet. She said they were lying in bed together and Frankie Fitzgerald was asleep. The defendant was going through his messages and saw that he'd been talking to a 13 year old and while Mr. Fitzgerald was asleep she put a dagger in his throat waking him up. He moved and they started fighting. He continued while the defendant was on the video chat she could be seen cleaning the bookcase with blood on it. She showed a book and showed blood spots. A friend recalled at some point during the video chat, she heard her say, I'm going to crack. The defendant had actually told her friend, you can't crack, you're an accomplice. You put the bin bags under his body. The court heard Groves had sent a message to her friend to create a false alibi in order to cover her ass, where she claimed Mr Fitzgerald had walked out on her and that it was over between the two. With a friend, Groves explained her logic saying Mr Fitzgerald had been suicidal anyway and that it was alright, they'll just assume he has gone off and committed suicide. When asked what she was going to do with the body, Groves replied, it's alright, I'm going to bury it in the back garden. A pathologist revealed 
Mr. Fitzgerald was stabbed 17 times to the front of the chest, twice to the other chest areas and three times to the neck, resulting in his death because of catastrophic blood loss. Footage from officers who arrived at the scene was played in court, so that's obviously not been released yet. Maybe it'll probably be released next week when they're sentenced, but we put it up again. But there was an incredibly strong smell of bleach in the bedroom. Groves could be heard saying, you tried to attack me. It's not the first time. I've got video footage of him. The couple had a camera set up in the bedroom, which captured them banging and of the KC highlighted a recording that showed the activity was consensual because they had spoken about their safe word, which was red lice. The prosecutor said Groves was infatuated with serial killers. She had pictures in frames on a wall and watched murder documentaries. The prosecutor said the Crown say by reading about and watching these, she was familiar with a crime scene, how to create a false narrative and how to create a false alibi. Addressing her claims of self-defence, the prosecutor said if the killing was in self-defence, why go about setting such an elaborate false alibi for yourself? Why didn't you call the police immediately? Why did you clean up the crime scene? Why did you move the body? It was a cunning ploy. Nothing was affecting her mind at the time. Giving evidence, Grove said she had the serial killer posters because she thought they looked pretty cool and had attacked Mr Fitzgerald because she thought he was going to strangle her to death after she saw him messaging that teenager and he attacked her. She said in defence, I couldn't breathe, I couldn't even scream. I realised he wasn't going to let go and I feared for my life. I reached out to grab an object in the bookcase and I hit him in the throat. I have a money box there and I thought that if I hit him with it, it would get off. He rolled off and he stood up and slid down the wall really slowly. There was bubbling coming out of his neck when he stopped moving. His chest wasn't moving, it was just the noise. When that happened, I realised that I had killed him. So she's going to be sentenced next week. Guys, absolute madness. I just want to say, rest in peace, Mr Fitzgerald. And my condolences go out to your family. Stay safe out there, guys. In the verdict, Frankie Fitzgerald's parents described the father of two as a shining light and said they missed him more than anything in this world. In a statement, they said, As a parent, you never expect to outlive your children. You will do anything in your power to protect them. Frankie was our baby, the youngest of five children, and he can never be replaced. He was a kind and beautiful person and sadly leaves two children behind that will never get to know their daddy. We thank the jury for their verdict today. To our Frankie, we love and miss you more than anything in this world. Your shining light will always be our hearts. Detective Chief Inspector Nicola Burton from Hampshire Police's senior investigating officer in the case described the murder as horrific and distressing. She said, Our thoughts, first and foremost, are with the family of Frankie Fitzgerald. I would like to praise their courage and hope today's verdict brings them some small relief despite knowing that nothing can fill the void left in their family by the loss of Frankie. I hope the sentence Groves receives in due course provides them with reassurance that justice has been secured for Frankie. We will do everything we can to investigate and bring to justice those responsible for such horrific crimes. The details disclosed in court were distressing for all to hear. I am pleased the jury has reached this verdict following tireless work from our local policing teams, detective specialist teams and the Crown Prosecution Service. I would encourage any victim of domestic abuse to find the courage to come forward and tell us about it. So guys, once again, I just want to say rest in peace, Mr. Fitzgerald, and my condolences go out to your family. It's your boy GC. Keep it locked, keep it real.